Broadcasting from Baltimore, Maryland, this is 5 by 3 Radio, where strength is for everyone. I'm your host, Emily Sokolinski, owner of 5 by 3 Training, a strength and conditioning gym in Baltimore, along with my co-host, Rebecca Fishburn, founder of Cornerstone Strength Maryland. Each week, Rebecca and I will discuss the ins and outs of strength training, why there is a no one size fits all approach, and why strength is so important in our daily lives. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now, on with the show. It's because I mean, I swear, if we asked questions of this of of women, like uh-huh. adult women, it would be interesting to, to hear what their answers were. Oh, okay. So this is the one Emily sent. Have you avoided sports or working out because you didn't want to be seen in gym clothes? No. Does eating even a small amount of food make you feel fat? No. Do you worry or obsess about your body not being small, thin, or good enough? No. Are you concerned your body is not muscular or strong enough? Kind of. Yeah. Well, I mean, I That's why I'm <laughs> not like. Do you avoid wearing certain clothes because they make you feel fat? No. Do I don't you, like low waisted jeans though. That's just they're just uncomfortable. uncomfortable. <laughs> I, like I hate high waisted jeans. I don't like. Low-waisted. Do you feel badly about yourself because you don't you don't like your body? No. Have you ever disliked your body? No. Do you want to change something about your body? I wish I was taller. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Do you compare yourself to others and come up short? Well, literally. (laughs) (laughs) See, so that's like some of those questions. I just like, these guys don't necessarily relate that way. Yeah. No, they don't have, I heard, I heard no, 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 no. So if I, let's say, put me um, at their age, you're both 15, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was 15, if you'd asked me these questions, I would have said yes, 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 yes. I would have answered yes to every single question. And I would have answered yes to all those questions into my late teens and my 20s and even my 30s. So it is fantastic that you answered no to all of those. And it was, it was, they, were, they were clear no's. We're here today with uh, two of Rebecca's daughters, Sadie and Felicia, and um, they're here on the podcast to talk about their experience as young women um, in sports, in, um, you know, in athletics, and their, their, their relationship with um, yeah, their, uh, their body and their, um, their body image. So Rebecca, you want to introduce your daughters to everybody? Okay. So we've got Felicia and Sadie, and they're, they're twins. They're both 10th uh, graders. And 36 to 10. <laughs> you're not tenure. 15. Um, getting ready to learn how to drive. So do you want to say a little bit about what your sports or your activities are, or do you want me to say that? I cannot. Um, so this is <laughs> Felicia. Yeah, I'm Felicia. I play soccer, and I have been throughout my whole life. And a couple years back, I started getting into lifting. Um, and I try to lift during my off season so I can build up strength. Yeah, yeah. And Sadie, my name's Sadie. I played soccer for a while, and then I stopped and I took up lifting. So, so Sadie and I are actually right now getting ready to compete in the Stronger Together meet up yep. in Baltimore next month. So Sadie's chosen her lift. I have. Right? Because we each do too, right? Exactly. Upper body, yeah. lower body. Yeah. So completely unlike me, <laughs> Sadie's preferred lift. A, a squat and overhead press. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So my, prefer- have, my preferred lift. It gets heavier now as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty heavy. <laughs> She's doing great. Um, so yeah. Felicia and Sadie, and they're um, the the more athletic of my kids. And they're the ones that have had sort of more consistent training experience using a barbell. Um, they have a strength and conditioning class at school, um, and their one of their older sisters has taken that one, um, but didn't sort of continue with that after the class was over. Um, she. She prefers to run from time to time. Yeah. Is that, De- that's Delia? Delia. And then the oldest one, Hannah, prefers mm-hmm. to walk. Mm-hmm. So what got you 
involved with the lifting ladies? Was it because your mom did it? Was it, um, did you want to do it? Did she encourage you to do it? <laughs> how much of how much of it was, was a, a combination of both? Well, I think I always wanted to get stronger for soccer and my mom just encouraged it and was there to support me. And like, it was really helpful because a lot of people my age and girls on my team didn't have access to someone like my mom who can help them and train them. So it was like, I was like, of course I'm going to train with my mom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Sadie, do I have to add? That's kind of it. the same thing. Yeah. Same story. <laughs> yeah. How much, um, I, you do, you do training, um, at school, but how, how different is that training compared to what you do, um, at home with your mom? Sadie? Okay. So for squat, they do high bar. We, we do low bar, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then for deadlift at school, they, what do they do? They, they, do they just do it wrong? Or they tell you, version? look at the ceiling, look at the ceiling for everything. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. And they yeah. tell you to use like a, an like alternating a, grip. Like what's the ceiling? Yeah. Yeah. So you, they have them do an alternating grip for all of their deadlifts, even mm-hmm. their warm up, mm-hmm. ceiling. Um, they say to look up, not the ceiling. Well, okay, look up. And then, you know, like if you or I were looking at the form that um, is taught, it, it more resembles um, a trap bar squat. Sure. Or sure. Squat. I, I mean, deadlift. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's not actually connected specifically with soccer. Mm -hmm. That's a separate PE class. They also have a separate strength and conditioning for girls. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the middle, the middle kid took strength and conditioning for girls. These two, Felicia and Sadie, both signed up for, you guys did. We signed up for strength and conditioning for girls, but then that filled out. So we had to do. Well, I think I just signed up for strength and conditioning. I think Felicia for sure signed up straight up for just strength and conditioning. Did you initially sign up for... I don't know. I thought I did it. So they had separate programs. So they had a strength and conditioning program, and then they had strength and conditioning for girls. Yes. Yeah. So what was the difference between both programs? Why the girls? We, we haven't... Can you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't actually done both programs Cause we just, we've only had one semester of right. that class, which was just the normal one, but I hope there's not a difference. You know, I hope well, it's the same thing just with different people. Cause I get that you would maybe feel more comfortable around just girls. That's what I'm wondering. Is it just yeah. is it for girls as in like, this is just, just girls, just women training, um, as far as, and then the other one is more co-ed and that's, and yeah. I can totally understand that. Yeah. I'm wondering well, if there's like a difference in what they're teaching in both. Well, I can speak from experience, but I've had friends that it's the same teachers teaching both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of my friends have said that uh, just strength and conditioning for girls is like more relaxed. And also when I first got into strength and conditioning, they kind of set, set the standards a little bit higher. Um, and then because like with the with the uh, with just the bar, they were like, um, when we first got into regular strength and conditioning, we, um, were, I'm losing my train of thought. It's okay. <laughs> so wait, um, we were, um, <laughs> like, you had a you story. Kind of yeah, I had a story. You that, had a story about the first day where the coach said, who has any experience with barbells? And you were, like, the only girl in the class that raised her hand. Mm-hmm. And the coach was, like, super impressed with her for having had any experience mm-hmm. with the barbell. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of became one of the coach's favorites. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. But I mean, <laughs> like, I guess what I think I also remember you saying is that maybe there was more, um, like it was more of a competitive atmosphere uh, with, with the, the co- boys and the girls co-ed, together. Yeah. The yeah. co-ed, the, the, you know, boys were wanting to set PRs and maybe there wasn't quite so much pressure for that in the, and the girls were yeah. for girls. Yeah, I, I asked because def- uh, one of our former trainees is I mean she's graduated from college now but when she was in college she had a she she did strength conditioning for uh swimming so she was a swimmer and their their training program was connected to their swimming so they had their swim coach and then they had their strength coach and the college girls had a different program than the boys the girls the girls did not deadlift only the boys deadlift only the boys weird so, so Jackie, yeah, it was, it was Jackie. So Jackie did not, they, she got into 
this program. So she would train on Sundays. Um, she would do her starting strikes. She would do her novice progression. And then she would train during the week with her, with her, you know, her team, but they did not deadlift. The girls were not taught to deadlift. They did, you know, more lunging and squats and more conditioning than the boys, which I'm like, they're both on the same swim team. They're swimming together. <laughs> why aren't they doing the same training? Yeah. So that's why I'm, 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 so I'm curious, like the difference between those two programs, maybe it just sounds like it was less competitive in one, more competitive in the others because you had the co-ed, you know, you had the boys and, and the girls together. I'm hoping that's the only difference and not that there's, there wasn't as much barbell training in the one program versus the other one, but it sounds like you're saying Stadium Felicia, it was not that it was just maybe more relaxed in the girls program. So not as competitive. Yeah. Um, so I want to, since we're talking about, this is, um, we just had, uh, our first podcast go out on body image. So did you guys, did um, the ladies have a chance to go over, go through the little, I, yeah, I just, honestly, I really, I Googled, uh, question like body image questions for teens, mm-hmm. and this is what popped up. Oh, I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, there's a I, lot of things that popped up, but this was this was one of the this whole like your body yourself. I, I was just kind of overwhelmed by by that. That was pretty. It was like it hit on everything that we talked about. I actually didn't send them that because it was long. Yeah, they they can't even read a long text. Well, all I wanted them to do was look. At, <laughs> actually, was the questionnaire part. Oh. oh, oh. So that might be interesting to, um, to maybe go over. Do you have that? Because it wasn't so much, yeah, it wasn't really all the other stuff. That's more like what we're going to talk about. Yeah, I don't know. Question, like, how I'll do you have to check up? again. Some of those questions I thought were a little bit weird. Yeah, I mean, that's why I wanted you to look at them. Uh, uh, I mean, because I mean, I swear if we asked questions of this, of, of women, like uh, adult women, it would be interesting to, to hear what their answers were. Oh, okay. So this is the one Emily sent. Have you avoided sports or working out because you didn't want to be seen in gym clothes? No. Does eating even a small amount of food make you feel fat? No. Do you worry or obsess about your body not being small, thin, or good enough? No. Are you concerned your body is not muscular or strong enough? Kind of. Yeah. Well, I mean, I That's I'm not like, do you avoid wearing certain clothes because they make you feel fat? No. Do I don't you, like low-waisted jeans, though. That's just, they're just uncomfortable. <laughs> That's like jeans I hate jeans. high-waisted jeans. I don't like do you feel badly about yourself because you don't, you don't like your body? No. Have you ever disliked your body? No. Do you want to change something about your body? I wish I was taller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you compare yourself to others and come up short? No. Well, literally. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> See, so that's like some of those questions. I just like these guys don't necessarily relate that way. Yeah, no, they don't have. They were. I heard. I heard. No, 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 no. So yeah. if I let's say put me um, at their age, you're both fifteen, right? Yeah. yeah. So when I was fifteen, if you had asked me these questions, <laughs> I would have said yes. 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 I would have answered yes to every single question. And I would have answered yes to all those questions into my late <laughs> teens and my twenties and even into my thirties. So it is fantastic that you answered no to all of those. And it was, it was they were they were clear no's. So we want to definitely focus talk, talk to you too about your you know, you as two young teenage girls kind of growing up in athlete, you know, in sports, what have you noticed as you have gone through, you know, your soccer, um, your soccer training and now your strength training? Is there a difference between you and other girls that you are friends with as far as how you view yourselves? Because it sounds like you two are very confident in, in yourselves, very confident. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you've experienced maybe, you know, around other other girls your age, um, as you've been, you know, growing and, and, um, developing and coming into your own and in regards to yourself and just into your sports too. I'm curious to like, you know, what your body body image is it, is it an issue with you or is it a thing that kids your age, girls your age, boys your age are concerned about? Okay. So, um, 
personally, body image isn't really that big of a deal for me because I'm like, sort of comfortable in myself, whatever. <laughs> but um, I can't speak for really anybody else because mm-hmm. I'm sure that everybody is insecure about something. Mm-hmm. Like I am too, but some people take it to different extents and they don't really show it that much. I don't know. Cause like you can be insecure about something and just keep it to yourself and not ever tell anybody, but it's Absolutely. really like eating you up inside. Right. And I don't think that anybody really at school openly talks about their insecurities that much. Mm-hmm. So I kind of wouldn't really know. Yeah. So you don't, you're so any of your friends that you talk to that you hang out with, you don't, you're not hearing that. You're not, that's not something that you all discuss. Well, none of like my close personal friends have talked to me about any of that. So and they all seem pretty like confident in themselves too. So I don't really know, but as for like the entire school population, there are probably some people that are more insecure than others. Sure. And you know, but I don't really know. Yeah. Felicia, what about you? Yeah, I think um, a lot of the people that I talk to are pretty confident um, in their body and, and everything. And I think it does really depend who you talk to and also who you surround yourself with. Um, I, you know, uh, everyone that I'm around and me are pretty confident, but I'm sure that there are people that struggle um, with their body image and their confidence and compare themselves to other people like on our team. So if, cause on a soccer team, like we're all pretty fit, we're all pretty athletic, but I'm sure that there are people that are comparing themselves like, yeah, but they're stronger. Yeah, but they're, they're more athletic and are trying to, you know, be someone, be like someone else who might have the same build as them. And they're trying to be and compare themselves to someone that is, it's really not obtainable for them. Mm-hmm. So like, are you saying compare more in terms of performance? Like they're like, Oh, you can deadlift more than me. I want to be like you. <laughs> well, yeah. And also like performance and, and how they look, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever experienced, because it's so it sounds like, I mean, just what I'm hearing, you two, again, seem very, very comfortable, very, very confident. And the many of the girls on your team feel, feel the same way, or at least they're not saying, they're not, they're not talking about it. Um, what have you experienced uh, as far as coaches talking to you about how you look? Is it more the coaches are focusing on, on uh, your performance as an athlete? And you're, or have you heard um, any coaches ever, um, you know, speaking in terms of what your body looks like, or maybe other, um, other, other uh, players, or even just people, not coaches, just outside voices, um, you know, because there's this kind of the stigma of like, oh, soccer players, you know, soccer girl, like they've got big thighs, they've got this, they've got, you know, there's too much muscle on them. When I you know. were asking specifically about their coaches, did their coaches ever say anything to them? They both were, they were both like shaking their head. No, yeah. their coaches don't talk to them about what their body looks like. They're yeah. so it's really about about their how they play. They talk about definitely yeah, definitely skills. Definitely 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 skills. Play. Yeah. Um, And I think kind of that question probably comes more from like your experience with dance. Exactly. Where the aesthetic was part of the performance in a way that aesthetic isn't a part of the performance with soccer. Right. Um, What were some of the other things that Emily was asking about that you guys... If there wasn't that, so maybe maybe not even from coaches, but outside voices, like people... Um, who know that you play soccer or, you know, people who don't have any um, investment in those, in sports, what they think of females playing sports. I mean, there's so, cause there's so much that, you know, layered on top of this, on top of that. And you hear so many stories, not just in the dance world or gymnastic world, but in other, in other sports of, <laughs> of bodies really being um, questioned. So it's not coaches, but have you ever, have you ever experienced or have your friends ever experienced negative, negative talk about you as an athlete, you as a female athlete, you know, um, has that, has that been something that you've ever note, observed yourself, even though it was maybe not directed to you, but others? No one has ever like in person said something to me about my body. I don't, I don't surround myself with that type of people, Good for you. but on the internet and yeah. stuff, 
people will, like somebody could post a picture and there is like absolutely nothing wrong with the picture, but somebody finds something and then everybody just drags that person down right. for no reason. And it's, it's sad, but like it, I don't experience that in real life, but I do see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On Same with yeah. you, Felicia. Yeah. I think that there's definitely society and, and people create these stereotypes like girls that play soccer have big, strong, muscly legs or something. And, you know, certain sports are, have certain like body types and, um, yeah, I, I definitely see it. I don't really think that that necessarily affects me, but it can definitely affect someone and how they look at themselves, you know, and it's, Mm -hmm. it's kind of toxic that that's, uh, like just normal in society that certain people, um, just because they do a sport should look a certain way because they really shouldn't, you know? I think that goes along with what you and I were talking about, Rebecca. Like, does somebody look strong? You know, what is looking strong? What does looking athletic mean? We had this conversation the last time I was lifting. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Um, Go ahead. About what? The, the whole conversation. Okay, so um, there's like this idea that looking strong means like you're really lean and you have big defined muscles and stuff. And lifting has kind of shown me that that's not the case and that you can be incredibly strong without kind of like looking like it. And there's really no one way to look strong because everybody has a different body type and everybody looks strong in a different way. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were watching the, um, I just thought it was really interesting. Yeah. Um, Martin, Martin's Lysis posted a training video. So uh-huh. he was strong. Oh, right, man. right. And he did some training with one of his friends who's a bodybuilder. And um, you look at his friend who's the bodybuilder and he's got like incredibly big, well-defined muscles because that's how he trains. And the, I think, to me, I think somebody who's not familiar with strength sports, who just sort of watches movies and has ideas of what strong looks like based on, say, the Avengers characters, uh-huh. <laughs> would look at the bodybuilder that he was training with and figure that he was stronger. I mean, obviously, there were um, aspects of grip strength and technique or skill that were at play also. Um, but Martine's Lysis doesn't have that same muscular definition that his bodybuilder friend has. Right. Um, and yet he was able to, to perform these, these feats. feats of strength. Yes. Incredible feats of strength. Um, you know, like, you know, stone to shoulder multiple times or, um, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. What's that thing you Wait had to Wait for <laughs> Right, you know, rep, you know, repeated over right. and over, or even like farmer carries and stuff. Right. I mean, that was that was more probably technique and grip related. But I mean, it was just the average person looking at the bodybuilder would assume that he'd be able to do more, lift more, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. be stronger because, because he looks strong. Was really just, right. He was training for that appearance. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The idea of like looking a certain way um, is is very. Uh, important, I think, to many people. You know, they have to look like the part, whatever that part is. I don't, you know, I don't know what looking looking that part is. You just had, strong man, you just had the strong woman competition. We just today. had a strong, yeah, we had a strong woman yeah. contest today, and it was fantastic. It was great yesterday. It was great today. Um, everyone had an awesome time, and I mean, there was, you know, there were women of all sizes there, of all abilities, and. Um, no one thought twice about, you know, what, what they were, what they looked like, what they were doing. They were just there to perform. They were there, they had, they had trained and they were going to do it. Um, and some, you know, did better than they expected. Others did what they expected. Others didn't do as well as they wanted, but they still had fun. And it, um, it just reminds me of, of, you know, when you have something like that, when you have an, an event or you have a sport for women where the focus is on their ability mm-hmm. and their function, yeah. it's much more meaningful than a, an event where the display is their body. And we talked about that, you know, yeah. the physique model, the, the physique, uh, the bodybuilder, the bikini competitor, 
um, where the focus is. Yeah. And, and I think so many women. But, like girls, do you think that, that like, you know, you've got a pretty confident um, outlook. Yeah. About your, about your Indeed. body, which that's not a thing that you really stress about or anything. How much do you think being involved in sports that focus on performance has had to do with developing that perspective? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you see do you see different attitudes in um, kids that you know that do not play sports? Like, are there other kids at your school that you think are, um, you know, without the benefit of sports or strength training or something like that, more concerned about trying to be skinny or like trying to look like um, I don't know a magazine model or something like that? I think that the way that society sort of ingrains this idea that you have to be skinny into like young people's minds, it's always in the back of your head that like you should maybe kind of look a certain way, but strength training and like sports have kind of moved that idea to the back, back of your head. So it's more based on like, Oh, like how strong am I? How much can I lift instead of like, Oh, how skinny am I? How much do I weigh? How much of that is, do you think influenced by your mom? And oh, your, your, okay, so you're, you know, <laughs> no, see, I'm serious because I mean, I think that, you know, it's, we, you know, we, I mean, my, my mom, I danced, my mom never danced. She, you know, she put me in dance. So I, it wasn't so much, I was influenced by, by, by her. I was influenced by my dance teachers and the people around me. So it was a, it was a, it was, and she had a hard time, you know, relating to what I was feeling and why I was feeling a certain way. Um, so having a role model like your mom, who is strong and who is displaying that strength that, you know, in front of you, encouraging that, um, I'm, I'm assuming is, you know, why you've, you know, you two feel so confident and having had gone, you know, the direction you've gone in. So maybe you, know, you want to talk a little bit about that. What about, what about you? Um, well, I think that it's just so nice to have you as my mom. Oh my so, God. <laughs> this is not what I was trying to have. No. <laughs> Felicia, do you want to give me some compliments? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that it's nice because you you value like strength and you know how much that really can impact my like performance in soccer. And you know that, you know, it's I can be healthy. Like, you know. Like, you yeah, know, I, mean, I just like for, for, for Felicia in particular and Sadie also when she was playing soccer, Felicia's at this point on two different soccer teams mm -hmm. and she's not strength training right now because there's just not enough time in the day. Sure. But during the off season, we're going to get back to that. That's definitely something that I'm going to be encouraging for her that she understands is because what we're, what we're trying to do is make her durable on the field. Like sure. I, we don't make don't tall people here. <laughs> right. We don't make big people in our right. family. So there's a lot of other players on the field that are bigger. And so these guys, when they're playing soccer, I think need to be as sturdy as possible so that they can be safe. And Absolutely. Safe. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and fast and, you know, do all their soccer, soccer moves. <laughs> well, soccer is like the number one. I mean, as far as injuries go. Soccer is like at the top of the list yeah. for, for injuries. And you see that, you know, so many knee, knees, ankles, you know, more than anything, because having that, yeah, having that durability, being able to stop and start and move and, you know, cut in different directions, yeah. that strength is going to help you stay more balanced and stable. And then if you do injure yourself, recover faster, ideally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you're, yeah, sorry, going, go ahead. going like kind of way back to um, when you said like how does having a strength training mother sort of like affect mm -hmm. you? Sure. Um, like strength training probably isn't something that I've gotten in if it weren't for her. Because <laughs> like it's not kind of that popular. It's not like a popular like sport like in high school. It's not like a high school sport, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, and I like I probably never would have heard of it until like high school strength and conditioning if it weren't for mom. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it's like because of the connection to five by three, you know, like the, 
they've got the opportunity, Sadie's got the opportunity this winter right. to participate in a meet. Right. You know, I mean, it's not like there aren't meets happening right. other places, but it's also like a very friendly, welcoming, especially to a first timer um, kind of atmosphere. It's not, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be like encouraging people and um, just a, a good all around experience. Yeah. I mean, I know that the um, Westminster up in Carroll County, I mean, um, our friends up at Westminster Strength and Conditioning yeah. have a huge, huge um, young athlete, yeah. uh, uh, you know, sports program. And, they, and, and that's so really many cool. girls. And there's so many girls who compete, yeah. you know, in their high schools up there. Yeah. And that's really cool because they've helped to shape the culture at that middle school and that mm-hmm. high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and those, I think those kids are really fortunate to have that and to have that um, available to like a large group. Um, whereas like here for their high school, like Sadie's saying, there's no powerlifting team. Right. No, there's the strength and conditioning class, but that's not, yeah, that's it. But that's not a thing here. Like it is up at Westminster. And it's only, you can only take the class for one semester. (laughs) So at best you're like lifting for like a few months every year. And that's it. You don't, you can't do it. I mean, if you want to do it again, are you allowed or you can do it every year, but you can't take it twice a year. You, no, can, yeah, you, you can, I took it. Post well, that was because last you messed year. up. You know? <laughs> no, I just, I don't think you can. Yeah, you can. Well, but also Felicia had a kid, you had a senior in there that was like kind of uh, helping to, he was like interning or something kind of helping to coach. Mm-hmm. Um, no, he just had like a half schedule and wanted to put strength and conditioning on it so that he could like train at oh. school, like and have it be one of his class times, which is kind of smart. <laughs> He's using his time wisely yeah. <laughs> and had the coach accommodate him. Okay. And so it wasn't like a necessarily like a formal yeah. arrangement, but I'm sure that I'm sure you can like somehow, like if you wanted to like be a teacher helper or something. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. be a teacher helper. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to hear you guys talk about this because when your mom and I were podcasting, uh, I guess it was the first, was the first go around our first, yeah, our first time on this topic, our experience at your age was completely different. Yeah. I mean, completely different. And I don't know if it was the um, activity that I was a part of. Um, most definitely dancing influenced and shaped my, my behavior. Um, but it would have been so nice <laughs> two at 15 have had the, uh, the confidence that you two have and had been introduced to, to strength training back then, but there was just, wasn't, it wasn't a thing. Right. Um, and for dancers, it's still not a thing. You know, there's, there are very few and far between who, uh, who decide that they want to do something like this. Um, so it's still, it's not going to be part of a, a dancer's routine for a while. Um, and even just recent, I mean, it's even just the past how many years, um, that really strength training has become a part of even like the, the sports, soccer, basketball, baseball. It wasn't really that big well, either. Well, and even now, a lot of times it's not even just the straight up, like get you strong, right, it's sort right. of let's do some sort of functional training. So yeah. we're going to somehow weight up the movements that simulate whatever your sport Right, is. there's that sport specific training, which doesn't yeah. exist. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but like I, we, you know, we were talking before about, um, body weight a little bit, Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, that, yeah, body weight, muscle mass, anyway, that, that all in relation to strength training and how, do you want to tell that story about your new outlook on your body weight based on your deadlift? Ah. Is it okay? I'm not totally sure what you're talking about. <laughs> um, like, I kind of never really cared about my body weight or whatever, but now it's like, however much I weigh, that's like, I can maybe like lift my body weight. That's whatever. right. <laughs> it's a totally different way of like, uh, like looking at yourself. Yeah. Like, I can pick up myself. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but then, like, instead of like looking at yourself and being like, like, oh, I weigh that much. It's like, oh my gosh, I can lift that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think that, you know when I talk to a lot of ladies at my gym, you know, telling them when they can squat their body weight or when they can deadlift their body weight, like that's a real 
that's a milestone. And they look at me and they're like, they want to, they want to be able to deadlift their body weight. And then they decide they want to deadlift their, you know, their body, you know, deadlift two times their body weight. That's like mind blowing. I mean, if I could, de- if I could deadlift two times my body weight, I'd be thrilled. Right. It is over here telling me need, we, we need to have a celebratory party for her. <laughs> <laughs> you need a you need a PR bell like we have. Oh yeah, no joke. We've talked about this when yeah. she to meet because she's still doing. She's you know coming back to strength training after some time off, right. and she's back on an LP, and she's been training now for what two what four weeks? Four weeks? About four weeks. So it's like LPs are fun. Every yeah. time you lift, it's a, it's a PR basically. Uh, it's awesome. I mean not brand new this time because she's done it before, but yeah. we're talking about coming up to the, um, to the meet, to the stronger together meet. And she's expecting to ring your PR bill. I hope so. Each time. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you figure your first attempt, that's something that she's already yeah. done. And yeah. Second attempt maybe also and third attempt. Well, yeah, well, we talked about that. She should probably take them for a test run before we get up there, but yeah. Yeah. Come up and ring the bell. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I obviously, you know, I'm hearing you, uh, both of you just talking about how, you know, how much you enjoy strength training, how you view your, you, you see your bodies that you haven't really ever had anybody, um, discuss your body with you, you know, in terms of, you know, looking a certain way. And you said that you're, you, you're, as far as like your friends go or, um, you know, your fellow students, you haven't heard that either. Is that, again, I, as Sadie said, just the people you've surrounded yourself with or it, because it's, it would be nice to know that everybody thinks the same way that you do. And maybe it's just because of the circles that you're in. So are there, are there any, any, can you, do you know of anybody else that's not within that circle that you definitely have like, yes, this person views me this way or this person sees life this way? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like Sandy was kind of talking before, I don't think they have friends like that, or they yeah. don't hang in groups like that. But toxic they've, people. yeah, talk to oh, people. Yeah. But they've seen you've seen that you were talking on like social media or, or social media. Posts. Posts. Like a lot right. of so it's definitely Just social media is toxic because you post yeah. a picture of yourself and people like pick it like it or not. And if you have more likes than this person oh, more people like to picture of my body than yours. And even you if know? it has a lot of likes, people still pick it apart. And in the comments, they'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how does, yeah. So how does that, how does that affect you? I mean, so do you, is it just, just, just yeah. no, 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 no. But like other, like, I guess other people, yeah. what is that, you know, how do you, you just put it to the side? Is that something, it, obviously it sounds like you just put it to the side. It's just like not part of who you are. So you know, you're not going to have to do anything to do to do with it. Other people might not be able to do that. Um, what is it? What do you, what do you think sets you apart from, from that kind of thinking? Is it just because, you know, is it, again, is it just the sports? Is it you? Is it how you were raised? Is it your mom? Like what, you know, what helps you has helped you kind of have that, this, this mindset of this is who I am. I like who I am. I like the sport I, I do. And nothing you can say is going to change my mind. This is, you know, this is me. How, how do you, where is, where does that mindset come from? You know, where, do, how do you, how am I, uh, I'm having a hard time explaining myself. I had a hard time trying to find out who I was. It took me a long, long time as a, as a, as a, as a teenager into adulthood and into my thirties to really f- be happy with myself. Where is that for you now? How's, how, have, how is the confidence that you have? Where does that come from? I think it's definitely like how I was raised and who I surround myself with. Mm-hmm. And like strength training is kind of like a little bonus, like, ooh, you're strong. But um, I don't think that like weight or looks have ever really been a problem because of the people that I'm with. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, I actually had, in eighth grade, we were split into, this is a little story here, we were split into, like, teams or whatever, and our classes, the majority of your classes were with the same people, so a lot of my friends had classes together, so I kind of made a whole new group of friends in eighth grade, and it wasn't, it wasn't completely toxic, everyone was nice, but it wasn't as carefree, and I am who I am in that group, so I feel like, transition from in eighth grade I was terrified to wear a pair of 
like sweatpants to school. Well, I wasn't terrified. I just would rather dress up. You know, I'd rather put on something nice and like, you know, cause that's the type of group of friends that I had made. But then when I went into high school, I was like, it was like, I was back with my old friends and it didn't matter. You know, she wears sweats every day. It was, yeah. (laughs) Especially now. Um, but, but was it like that in seventh grade? Or no, and it, it was, was just because in eighth grade you kind of had to find a new group of yeah. friends, and that group of friends wasn't necessarily toxic, but they did care more about. It looks. was just yeah, it was just different. So mm-hmm. I went from it was just a different dynamic in that friend group, and I don't necessarily think it was. Um, I I prefer my friend group better that I have now okay. and I had before. Sure. Um, but I just think that it was it was my friend group now is just a little bit more accepting and supportive of each other. So that really does make a big difference in who you support or surround yourself with and everything you do, you know, in your free time too. Like if you're, I'm going to hang out with my friends and we're all just going to go have fun, do something rather than like going with the other group of friends and doing something. It just might be a little bit like more pressure to be or act a certain way, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, some pressure is good, but it gets to a point where it, it just really shouldn't matter. Be who you want to be. And like, it, you know, it sounds so easy. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. It's not, though. It's not. It's not. It sounds so easy. Uh-huh. And it's, it's so refreshing to hear two, two young, you know, young women, 15 years old, have this, have such a um, adult, you know, outlook on we like who we are and I, I'm going to, I'm going to be with this, this, these group of friends because we're just happy being together. It's not about what we look like, what we dress, how we dress. We're happy with just being together and who we are. And I'm not going to associate myself with this group because this group has different pressures. You know, they're putting different yeah, pressures on me. Elle and Emily last week. And this kind of gets to the group, but also like competitiveness, like you've got, competition on your sports team to play well or do well um you've got your own kind of competition myself with yourself (laughs) more than I did yesterday yeah right so um but I had a friend in eighth grade who was who was pretty toxic and and was competitive about being skinny um so that was like a um a rough patch for me in middle school it wasn't she wasn't just my friend in eighth grade she was kind of my friend all through middle school So that was like not a a good, healthy influence. And that was a lot to do with friends. But like, if I don't know what what it would have been like if we'd had a sport and she could have turned that competitive sense towards a performance goal as opposed to like she kind of had an appearance goal and it was based on, you know, what you would see. I mean, you guys have watched movies from the 80s and people are kind of like stick figures and... (laughs) <laughs> representation. Uh, yeah, representation. yeah, not a lot of representation. There's yeah. kind of one look and it's skinny. Yep. Yep. And so that was sort of what the environment was that we were growing up in and not a healthy way to channel that competitiveness into something productive. Yeah, Sadie and I are like incredibly lucky. Like we yeah. have such a good group of friends that we always support each other. I mean, you, you're our mom. <laughs> so you introduced like strength training at such a young age and to value like, you know, how strong health. we are, you know, and health over health as opposed to appearance. <laughs> um, Although you guys used to complain about that. <laughs> 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 Still do. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. No, friends can have a huge influence on you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I mean, your mom and I were talking about this. Like my friends, we really didn't, we didn't, we didn't talk about, um, how we looked in what we, you know, in, in our dance classes, it was kind of an unspoken thing because no one wanted to admit, I think in a sense of what they were doing, you know, how they were trying to stay thin. Um, and I never liked being tall. You talked about wanting to be taller, like anything you could change about yourself. I didn't like the fact that I was taller. I had a growth spurt much later than all my friends. So I would do all these things to my leotard to my, my, my uniform in, in class to make myself look shorter. <laughs> I, you know, you didn't have like elephant knees and elephant ankles. And yeah. Your- no, <laughs> I I'd pull, I'd pull the leotard down to make my legs look shorter. And then I pull my, like I, I'd pull the, uh, the leotard down and kind of safety pin it to make, I, just to kind of hide myself. 
Um, and the way I stood too, hunched over to make myself shorter. It was, it was horrible, but it was that I wasn't comfortable with who I was. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like we've talked about this before, even like adults, adult women that you Absolutely. and I work with now that have, um, like you have to sort of reteach posture because it's so ingrained in them to try and be, you know, shorter, which yeah. is always, it blows my mind at like, however tall I am. So I, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to say five one. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day and, and they they set their bench up to like a really high, uh, you know, and I said, it was Molly. I said, Molly, your arms really are, they're not that long. I said, you're not that big. She said, I, I, I know. I said, you're like Rebecca. Rebecca sets her, her, her bar height. I'm like, you're not that tall. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I think I am. I think I am. So you routinely know, look at people five, four and think that we're the same height. <laughs> but you try, you're, you're trying to take up as much space as possible. And I'm, I was trying to always take up as little space as possible, <laughs> you know, and, and, I didn't have that. I didn't yeah, have that. Emily, that that's all just in strength training. Right. 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 Growing up, like this time frame I'm talking about through middle school, it was like trying to be smaller. Yep. Yep. And I don't hear that coming from, from Sadie, you know, or you, Felicia, that it's not about that. There's nothing about that at all. It's just about my sport and how much stronger I need to be to be better at my sport and how much it makes, how good it makes you feel. And I think you're, you know, your mom and I were talking about that, that, you know, the function of the body being functional as opposed to looking a certain way. And that's very hard for many, many, many adult women to get through their heads. They, 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 they compare themselves constantly to other women. And it's unfortunate because I think it comes from when they were younger. It definitely stems from, it's not something that just kind of happened when they were, you know, five years ago, it goes way back, (laughs) you know, it goes way back. And how we are, have been able to reconcile with that has been, you know, a lot of work on our part. And you're already, you've been doing this. I mean, how long have, how long have you guys been? So you've been playing sports since like, you know, I guess you were young, like elementary school, right? Yeah. yeah. So you are involved and still involved with that. And it's still a positive thing in your life. And now you added the strength training, another positive aspect of your life. And it's just kind of, you're just building that, building that, building that. So going into college and into your, you know, young adulthood, it's just going to, you know, you're taking off, you're already in, you know, heading in the right direction. And that's extremely fortunate. Um, Cause it's not the case with many, you know, many young women. I mean, I, I know of many 15 year olds who are very unhappy. <laughs> with yeah. Themselves. Well, and I mean, I guess I worked with a teenage girl, uh, maybe a year or more ago who was, I think about these guys age at the time. Um, and her coach actually had said something to her about her body. She's a swimmer. Mm -hmm. Um, and she has tall parents. And when she went through a growth spurt, her body changed significantly and she was a lot taller and she was a lot different shaped than she had been the year before. And the coach told her something along the lines of you better cut back on the snacks or, you know, some kind of thing like that. And that was was sort of the, the trigger point when the mother started to look for coaching just because she wanted her daughter to be getting some other messaging about nutrition and its importance for an athlete um, and uh, strength and the importance of strength for an athlete and just a different way of um, thinking about, her size than, than what had been suggested by her coach. Yeah. And these guys are fortunate. They have very professional coaches. Yeah. Focused on skills, focused on performance and never felt like it was their place uh, to say anything about body size or anything like that. Because you have stories. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm, I can't remember just recently in the news, you know, I mean, all those horrible horror stories of young athletes, um, was it Nike? Was it the running program that there was an article that recently came out? I mean, and you have, so you have these top, top, you know, top competitors, young competitors who were just being destroyed by coaches who want them to be smaller <laughs> and, 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 and that's going to help them big, be faster for some reason, you know, for some reason, there's just like this complete, like, nope, doesn't work that way. So to be, to have coaches who are so focused and understand and supportive and focusing on the athlete as a whole 
yeah. is, you know, um, we have, and we've talked about um, that this doesn't affect, you, you spoke of the, the young woman, the swimmer, this doesn't affect just females. We have a young male at our gym who um, is uh, 17 and he's fantastic. And he was, he's a football player and he's not playing right now, but when he was in eighth grade, you know, he suffered a lot of, um, a, a lot of problems because he was, you know, he hadn't had his growth spurt yet. So he had all this, you know, kind of baby fat still. And he yeah. was, it, it, but it affected him mentally. Yeah. And I actually just, um, uh, a friend of ours recently, just actually this week had posted something, um, where her son, who I think is in middle school now, um, had to do some sort of project for health class or PE class and had to figure out his BMI, mm-hmm. right? Body, body mass index, height and weight, mm-hmm. which is not an accurate read of someone's health. Um, or, you know, right. like weightlifters right. Right. We talked about always this. have yeah. trouble with BMI yeah. because muscle is dense and it weighs more and it's not an accurate measure. But um, according to his calculations, this kid who's like an, I guess, a middle school age kid um, calculated that he was overweight and the mother was like very upset about that because apparently the kid was upset, you know, so that's just part of like the growth process for a lot of kids and, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's hard to get people to understand, uh, you know, fat and muscle. And the fact is that actually, you know, a pound of fat and a pound of muscle, they actually do weigh the same. It's just one takes up less space than the other one. That's why you can step on a scale, weigh the same, looking a certain two different ways, but your pants are smaller or your shirt's smaller or, you know, your belt fits differently because muscle has taken up less space than the fat. But when people hear fat and they get in their heads, fat, fat, and they get in their heads, muscle, muscle, and it's just, they can't, well, and there's also so much advertising that's confusing. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So yeah. it's um, it's just um, it's hard. It's hard sometimes to to get, uh, get through all all the noise, but it doesn't affect just just young females. Young males go through the same, same thing. Can go, can go through the exact same thing, and then it's hard to change that behavior. Trying to we're trying to get him to eat. He's lost weight because he got he saw himself and he saw some fat and. Well, this all goes back to Jay's conversation, too. Yes, right? yes. Like Jay, at, as a middle schooler, trying to look cut because he wasn't tall, so right. dieting and all that kind of stuff, but right. yeah. Right, right. So there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, a noise to work through, and when you, don't have, when you don't have any noise, as these two <laughs> don't have any, it's, it's great because so yeah. much more can happen. So much more is going to happen. So much more potential. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it's... it's um, it's, it's, it's a nice conversation to have because, you know, hopefully we're going to have people listening to this and listening to, you know, these two, to you and you, Sadie and you, Felicia, and say, well, I want to be like that. <laughs> I mean, I wanna, <laughs> or, or I want to make sure that my, you know, my daughters or my sons growing up, you know, feel supported too and, and you know, and feel encouraged. And how can I best support them? as they're growing and developing, um, not just physically, but, you know, emotionally and mentally. I mean, what's going to help them be, be themselves and help them learn to that being themselves is, you know, is, uh, is okay. (laughs) We're all looking off to the side here. Who's that? Yeah. That's another sister's trying. (laughs) (laughs) And the dog. (laughs) And the dog. Yeah. Um, is there anything else where we should, you know, probably close, yeah, close here, anything that you two want to add, share anything um, along this hard. discussion that we haven't, that we haven't touched on that, you know, you think um, people would benefit from hearing or just something to share. It's okay if you don't. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, you're always growing and you're always learning and I'm definitely, I think I can become more confident. I think I can, you know, grow. And if you, you know, life is, you learn, you go along and just be yourself. Hard and everyone tells you, just be you. It's fine. You're you and you're awesome. But it's once you realize that you are who you are and you can't change it and you're, it's only gonna, you know, 
And you're you're okay only gonna that. yeah, you've got to be okay with that. And once you realize that, you're only gonna be happier and better off. And reaching that point might take a take a couple minutes, but once you get years. there, <laughs> yeah, years, minutes, <laughs> however long you want to say. Um, once you get there, you know you're better. Off. You're yeah. yeah, you're gonna thrive. Yeah. <laughs> Sadie? I don't have, I, your insecurities don't define you. So absolutely. Just that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's hard. It's hard to, um, to hear that sometimes and really like work at it. But I think when people work at it and they just, they have to find something that they enjoy doing, I think it makes somebody more ha- uh, able to enjoy themselves. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess, so one other just last thing, can I tell that story? I love this story, but it was like that patch that Felicia was going through with that group of kids that was a little bit more, uh, just less supportive, a little less supportive. Um, that was when she started doing strength training in the first place. And, and she came home one day and she's like, mom, I kind of don't want to tell you this because I don't want it to go to your head or anything because <laughs> you're all about strength training all the time anyway, but it's really making me feel more confident about a lot of things at school. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So it definitely does. I do not remember saying that. I don't. I wrote it down. <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't think I got your wording right, but I mean, that was the gist of it. You were, and I didn't realize at the time that that was, I knew it was a different friend group, but I didn't know they were, I mean, and I didn't know they were that much tougher to get along with, but I, I know you definitely came home and you were like, yeah, that's strength training. And it was just so funny the way she said it too, because she was like, I know you're going to take this as a you know big compliment, but <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway, because it's true. <laughs> strength training is making me feel more confident about everything. I, yeah. I mean, we'll close here. I mean, when you, when you are using your body and you discover how much your body is capable of doing, it changes everything in, you know, inside of you mentally. There's just there's definitely a lot more confidence that you build up realizing that my body is capable and function and can function like this. I get, I mean, every time the, the contest comes and goes, I get pumped the yeah. next time I go into the gym. Yeah, because I want to get back to my own training. I may not be training for strong women, but I'm still, I can't wait to get back in the gym. I can't wait to start benching. I can't wait to get my squat session in, even though I know it's going to be hard and I'm going to, you know, grunt and I'm going to, you know, feel like I'm going to pass out, but it feels so good after I've done it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, and it's just like that right, right there, what you're describing with the strong woman is also kind of what these guys are talking about is who you surround yourself with. Exactly. The people that are showing up to Charm City Strong Woman Contest are people who are encouraging and supportive and lifting right. each other up. and Lifting. Yeah, and lifting. <laughs> yeah. I just got the nicest email back from a young woman who was, just a, it was her first time doing the contest. She's at Westminster, and she came in with her, some, her service dog. It was for, oh, a vet, for a vet. So um, I, I didn't ask her too much about it, but it definitely was the, you know, the, the dog was her service dog. Yeah. And she said to me, you know, I don't do really well in crowds. And we had very, I mean, it was just the volunteers basically and the competitors. So no crowds, no spectators. And she said it was the best. It was so supportive and encouraging for her first time. Yeah. And, she, I, when and I that's, you know, that's a big part of it. Afterwards. Do you remember that? I was like, I came home from that strong woman competition, the first and only time I did it. And I was like on such a high, I wrote some big long blog about it. I'll have to find it. <laughs> yeah, no. And, it, and it's, this was, you know, this was an email unprompted. It wasn't like I sent an email out thanking everybody for being there. I thank everybody yeah. that, you know, but it was an, an email unprompted just saying, you know, thank you for, for my first time. And for someone who, Obviously, you know, a bigger crowd would have been a lot more intimidating for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad that we had the crowd that we had. And maybe she chose it because it was going to be smaller and it wasn't going to be, it was going to be limited with the people and she needed that. Um, and she said, I'm, I'll be there next year. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. This was great. And um, I can't wait to see you, Sadie, on the platform yeah. in December. Keep training, keep training, and good luck with school. And we'll see you. Thank, uh, you. thank we'll see you in December. <laughs> see All you right. in person in December. Yes. See you soon. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, ladies. That was great. They're, they are. 
That was so a, different from me. I, I wish I was. <laughs> I wish I had been 15 and had their. Yeah, and you can see it. It's not. It's it. It is real. It is real. I'm looking at them, and they're just kind of like shrugging their shoulders, like it's who you surround yourself with. It's who you you know yeah. where you are in your life and who you want to be, and that is so different for so many for so many young people. Thanks for listening to Five by Three Radio with Emily and Rebecca. If you like our show and want to know more about Five by Three training, please visit us at www. Five. That's F I V E the letter X, the number three, dot com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. To learn more about Rebecca, please visit her website, cornerstonestrengthmaryland.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.